Rock Bottom podcast then. Matt Sorum. Rock Bottom, one of my favorite songs by UFO. <laughs> rock Bottom, Rock <laughs> Bottom. <laughs> Super stoked I, I, to I have a, you here. I had a UFO fan club in high school. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because everyone liked Led Zeppelin, but I liked rock. I liked uh, UFO. How come? I don't know, just to be different. <laughs> Led Zeppelin in those days was like sort of like mainstream. Yeah. yeah. You know? So I was like, me and my buddies had UFO club. So you have, to put it mildly, a rather impressive, you know, background. You started out, or may not started out, but got known playing with the cult. And then, of course, Guns N' Roses, Delta Revolver, Hall of the Vampires still, yeah. And uh, now, Deadland Rituals, mm -hmm. with none other than Giza Butler, Frankie Perez, Steve Stevens, which we know from Billy Idol, Mike Jackson, mm -hmm. whatnot. How did this band start out? Because it is a band, it's not just a project, right? It is a I band. stand on this one corner in Hollywood, and I have this sign, it says, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm starting a band, you know. <laughs> Put an ad in the newspaper, no. That's what I used to do in Hollywood, but um, no, I just you know I've I've just been very fortunate to to be sort of in a circle of musicians and gotten to know a lot of guys over the years and been around for quite a, quite a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I just got an email from I just got a text from Mike Inez, Malice and Chains. But you know, we have a lot of friendship and a lot of sort of like when we come out here. We all see each other and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, me and Mike had a band. We were in Slash and Snake Pit together. Oh, yeah. You know, I remember, and I, I don't know, I just, I kind of, behind the scenes, I've always been that guy that's, like, always conjuring up something. Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, what if we get this guy? Or So you're the guy that, like, starts bands, not just, you no, know, like I've, I've started, right? I've started a few. Yeah. Like, you know, when we did Slash and Snake Pit, me and Slash were, like, driving down this hill, and we were, like, we were, we were written these songs, and. You know, I said, he said, who should we get to play bass? I said, Mike Inez, let's get Mike, he's available. You know, and stuff like that. So when this band came to fruition, I, you know, I'd always liked this singer, Frankie Perez. He wasn't mm -hmm. maybe as well known as some of the rest of us, but. You've been with Apocalyptica? Yeah, right he's now? been around, you know, and I've had my eye on him and I think he's, he needs something that's been, you know, to be called, call his own vehicle, if you will, like mm -hmm. a rock and roll vehicle, music, musical vehicle. So as his voice and everything, which I've always appreciated, I have always been a huge fan of Steve Stevens, but I've never really uh, had a big relationship with Geezer Butler with the exception of I played with him once in LA for an event. Mm -hmm. um, like an old star band or yeah, something? Yeah, like an event thing. Mm -hmm. And then I did a, he came and joined the Hollywood Vampires when we played the Roxy. And we and, have to name drop who else is in the Hollywood Vampires. <laughs> uh, some yeah. pirate guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, Johnny some. Yeah, just saw a movie with him last night. And then these week. other two dudes. <laughs> yeah, Alice, some guy from some band called... That was good with Joe Perry. Oh, yeah, Aerosmith, yeah. yeah, something, something <laughs> yeah. like that. Or yeah, the other. A bunch of bombs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, anyway, he came and played, and we had such a blast. And then, you know, when I read that Sabbath was, you know, basically done, and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you always wonder, are they really over? You know, is it really the end? You know? But, when, when do one get to retire from this business? <laughs> so, so, when I saw that, I, I, I've, I've reached out to Geezer and I said, hey, you know, I got these two guys that I think this combination of players could be interesting, different. Some people are like scratching their heads like, well, that's kind of a weird lineup. But I, I don't think so at all. I just, I think musically, everyone's super on top of their game. And, and so that's how that sort of happened. And then we got, you know, we got started getting into the songwriting process and Sand Keys were a song that Steve had written sort of as a benchmark. I said to Steve, hey, let's write something heavy, kind of in the Sabbath vein, and, you know, using that as sort of a jumping point. Right? Okay. And Keys are like the song, you know, and he said, I'm in. And then we started getting together and working, and Steve went to his Keys's, uh, uh, and Steve got together, right, and things like that. And then mm -hmm. we all got together, and then we recorded. Then we called an agent, 
to book some shows. Uh huh. Really, how it happened. And now here we are in Europe. You know, we we booked this. I think the beginning of the year, sort of just to get going. You know, yeah. because we're a new band. It's mm -hmm. it's very weird. It's like <laughs> some guys have been doing this for a while. We're yeah, like, we're a new band. Really. Yeah, and it brings a lot of energy that you remember when you were like young, like when you were. Do you still get starstruck, like? You know, playing with Geezer Butler. Geezer's a hero, man. Yeah. Of course. I don't tell him that. I tell him he's great. <laughs> well, what's I, it I like, say, like, first rehearsals? Well, obviously, you played I, with him once before, but, you know, being a drummer and playing with bass player, that was, you know, you, you know, know, just the right I've time. I've played with so going. many amazing musicians over the years, but I res I'm very respectful about it. Yeah. See, I understand who has come before me, and I, I, I always want to be representative of respect mm -hmm. you know and, and the, these are one of those guys you know and I always when he joined the band I said to him you know geezer you know you know you got the veto right whatever you say is cool is cool whatever you don't like just say mm -hmm. and it's not okay it's like <laughs> right so <laughs> Right? Well, he's he's a posture, I mean, why God's wouldn't sake. he? Yeah. Why wouldn't he have that right? Yeah, he he's earned it. Oh, of course. Right, yeah. and then and then you know, and but you know he Geezer likes being a band guy. You know, he's like, oh no, Matt, no, I'm I'm in the band. Mm -hmm. He likes being in a unit. But know. what was it like? Because he was kind of retired or semi-retired. Well, whatever. if you read the article, you, you got over that pretty quick. <laughs> 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 like, you know, he was one of the, you know he. He's an outdoorsy kind of guy, though. Mm -hmm. You know, he likes to go out and, you know, because you've got to remember when you're a musician, you've been on the road your whole life. You don't really see much. Nope, true. So you got to go back and enjoy those places that you've been to a hundred times. Mm -hmm. right? Like I came here last summer and with my wife and we mm -hmm. tooled around. And I've been to Italy 50 times, but I never seen anything. Nope. <laughs> I never went to the Coliseum or, you know, any museums. So that was like, wow, we're on vacation. It's mm -hmm. not like we're not on tour. True. Yeah. So I came to Copenhagen about three or four days early, and I, I cruised around and went and saw stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. So, yeah, and we got him out of retirement. You know, and I got him on the bus. I said, when was the last time you were on a bus? He says, oh, it's about 20 years ago. Of course. You know, I said, well, I think you're going to like it. <laughs> so I just saw him and I said, what do you think? Because we just got the buses yesterday. This is a really nice nightliner. Oh. Yeah, and he's on yeah. another, we're on another one over there. Oh, yeah. an even nicer one. Star coach, star, <laughs> star coach. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to have fun, you know, and I think that's really what it is about for us. You know, if we're going to have fun and enjoy this, at this particular moment in our career. You, you do have a reputation as speaking your mind. Me? Yeah. Oh, I always have, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And not in a bad way, well, but, you know. <laughs> I, I, there's moments in my career where maybe I was a little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe it got the best of me a couple of times. Uh-huh. You, you think know, of someone in particular? <laughs> I wouldn't. Well, I'm just a human being, like yeah. everybody else, and I just feel like, I don't know, I would hope that the people would would be that way too but people are different I'm not a, my mom always used to say to me son you know it's gonna, you're gonna get out there in life you're gonna have to eat a little crow mm -hmm. which meant keep your mouth shut sometimes yeah. but you know in retrospect maybe there's things in the past that I've gotten a lot more humble as I've gotten older too mm -hmm. and maybe it wasn't my place in certain instances to say things but I've always been that sort of a personality kind of guy mm -hmm. you know um, but nowadays I'm just really grateful that I'm still able to do this shit yeah you know and play and I'm really more about just keeping everyone happy yeah you know and that's that's great because I've been in some of the biggest bands and there's been ups and downs you know, and not, in the biggest bands, there are also very big personalities. Yeah, you don't want to get out there and have a shitty time. No. You're like, this sucks. Why does this suck? Mm -hmm. uh, shit. Yeah. 
right? Penthouse problems, I call them. Yeah, it's like a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah, and then you get in the you get in the situation and it sucks, and you go, God. And then you realize it's not always all about the money, and it's not about this and that and the other thing. It's about feeling good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where I am now in my life. I want to play with people that I that I respect and I like as people. Yeah. Uh, if we have a little row, we we make up and we we uh, apologize or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, move on. Mm-hmm. That's good. Did you move to the desert a couple of years ago? Yeah. Why? I just, you know, I was just ready for a break from Hollywood. I've been in Hollywood since 1979. Uh-huh. Just being that guy. Yeah. You know, going out. Hey, you know. Since your late teens. Yeah. yeah. Since I was 19 years yeah. old. And I just felt like I needed, I, I could never really break away from it. It was a weird thing because as a drummer, you know, obviously I've been through so many bands and I've, I've had this this very interesting career about somehow morphing into these different things and being able to, to keep going, right? But I'll have I'll have lulls in my career where there'll be a year go by and nothing. It's like, are people not calling me because they think I'm not available or that I'm going to ask for too much money or something? But I only get in situations that seem to be maybe a little bit bigger or whatever. Uh, and when that period of time came, I really wanted to just go and get away and reboot. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the desert, I went to this very cool space that I have out there that's near a mountain. And, you know, I've been off drugs and alcohol now about 11 years, but I was like, me and my wife went out there. I wrote my book, which I just finished. Mm-hmm. I did that. I spent over a year and a half writing my book. When's that due for release? Next year. Oh, cool. Yeah. And you have a title for it? I, I can't say yet. We're okay. still dabbling in titles, but mm-hmm. we're very close. And then, um, so I kind of really did like a reboot of my my soul and everything. And just, and then I was really super re-energized when I, when I got done with, well, I'm still living in the desert. So I go back, yeah. I go back and forth from LA. And then when I drive in LA, it's like I'm going into it, you know. It's uh-huh. like into combat, <laughs> kind of. You know, and I go out to the desert. And I'm like, oh, I drive around in my old car. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. Yeah, I'm like fucking <laughs> French bulldog. Yes, yeah. so, you know, it's like rock and roll problems of like you know. But is it the energy of the place, or is it yeah, that you it's, have changed? It's me yourself? too. Me too, and it's the, you became a vegetarian too, right? Uh, I, I eat. I eat uh, or plant-based or yeah, whatever. Not, I met, I, you know, I went vegetarian for, for a long time and now I bring in some other things. But mm-hmm. based on uh, just everything I'm doing now is more of a healthy lifestyle. It puts yeah. you that way. <laughs> I just want to live. You know? <laughs> that was about... Now it's about... I, my wife's a little younger. I always say, hey, you know, I want to be around for you. you yeah, know? yeah. You know, we haven't even had kids yet. You know, she wants to have kids now. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. I've but got... you have to stick around for I some do. time. So you got to yeah. think about these things, yeah. you know. And I'm it's... out here on the road. I'm drumming. And I'm like, you know, fuck, I got to stretch. I got to, yeah. you know, it's not the old days where I could throw back two shots of Jagger at you. Know, you know, God, no, we're not in our 50s anymore. Get, get up there and throw that down, you know. But so, yeah, I love it. And I'm in this... You know, what neighborhood that's next to this mountain that's on Indian land, Native American. Oh. So it's a lot of fun. Very calming. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but that gives me the energy to come back into this world, you know, and then, you know, I feel at home here. I feel really relaxed today. And that for me, being relaxed um, is getting up on stage and having a great show. Yeah. I can understand that. The old days, it was like, fuck, what am I going to do to, like, tear myself up? party all night and, uh-huh. and let me see if I can make it through the set without passing out you know what I mean <laughs> I mean I'm your tour manager would have been so excited about when that when I went on not. tour with Metallica you know Justice for All I remember me and Lars would just party all night and then I would stand on stage and laugh at him from the side you know because I knew he was hurting <laughs> but the thing about it was in those days you'd sweat it out and start all over again yeah. you know you would get up there 
feel like shit, fucking hungover and like, oh fuck. And then you'd see the crowd and the crowd brought that, brought you all back. You're feeding from that energy oh from my the God. crowd. Yeah. You know, I'd say to people, you don't really understand I'm really into energy and shit like that now. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, like all kinds of metaphysical stuff. But energetically, what's happening up there is the transition of energy from the audience and the performer. Mm-hmm. So you're feeding off this, you know, you got to remember this whatever amount of 30,000 people looking at you. Mm-hmm. You can't say that that isn't spent sending in a vibration through you that, of that yes. transfers love and aspiration and all those sorts mm-hmm. of things. Admiration. Admiration, I mean admiration and so you you know you walk off filled up with all that and in the old days you'd be like now what do I do oh my god I I have to stay high (laughs) watch what it was any performer can understand that they can understand that now I gotta keep that going Mm -hmm. what is that feeling that I'm Mm -hmm. having the feeling is you're high and now I'm gonna stay high so now I'm gonna go get the girl now I'm gonna get the the, I'm gonna keep drinking I'm gonna keep partying because I wanna Mm -hmm. keep that and then and yeah, the problem with that in the old days was that transferred into ego and now I'm this and, yeah. you know I'm like oh <laughs> look at me I am the king you yeah. know yeah and but now like 20 lines of blow later you don't yeah, get this high as high as the first lines anyway of blow, so and then you gotta fucking drink more yeah. you know fuck. level it out <laughs> yeah, so now it's like more of like for me it's a cold, whole different energy and I come off and I'm like fuck that was great you know, even if I have a little bit of a mishap, I try not, I don't, like, relive the show. Okay. Like, I, like I used to go, oh, fuck, I played that one song a little weird or something, you know. So I how go, do you handle that now? I just kind of go, hey, man. Forgive yourself? Yeah. All that I'm stuff. human. That takes what? work. Uh-huh. You know? You know how we all are. We do that. We beat ourselves up about stuff. And, yeah. You know? And... Which, all that shit's just gotten easier as you get older. Mm-hmm. You learn, you know. Of course, you have a Swedish connection actually with no. this album. Oh, we do. Yeah, uh, Jonas Åkerlund. Oh, I love him. Yeah, he's so great. Yeah. How he, did that come about? Oh, uh, he's been a friend of mine for a while, and I love him. And you know, he's he's a hard rock fan. He used to be a drummer. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I came here with the Vampires. We were in Stockholm, and Jonas took us to his house and came mm-hmm. to the show. Um, but then in L.A., he has a house in L.A., and we, we get together for dinner. And he came out and visited me in Palm Springs with his wife, B. Ockerlin, yeah. who's a very famous clothing designer. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, uh, uh, stylist. Yeah. And they're mainly known for doing a lot of pop. You know, they do Beyonce and Madonna. And, mm-hmm. But he, he's, a, he's a heavy metal dude. He loves rock and roll. So I called him up. I said, hey, man, will you help us? We're just getting started. We're indie band. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He's like, yeah, man, let's do a photo shoot. So he did the photos. It really was, cool photos. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted it to be, you know, this, you know, he knew what to do. Yeah. And he did the logo, too. Oh. Okay. That's just that it has an extra. You know, and it is, you know, it's gothic and it's yeah. old English, but it's hand drawn by a guy here in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the, the raven was drawn. I got his name in my my book that I wrote is with two Swedish writers. Really? Yeah. Cool. They're they're here actually. Carl Martin. and Alex, perhaps. No, Martin Svensson. Oh, okay. You know Martin. No, I don't. They, they've written a lot of books. Cool. And so they were two Swedish guys. Look forward to to reading that. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm going to let you go and get on stage in a while. And uh, thank you so much. It's been such an yeah, honor and a pleasure to have you. Five hours from now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And best of luck with everything. Thank you.